This tutorial will explain one of the ways that we can determine if an argument is valid or invalid. We can, recognize, we can determine an argument is valid or invalid by recognizing it as an instance of one of a number of valid and invalid forms. Consider the following argument. The gerbil is in the teapot if the cat is. The gerbil is in the teapot. Therefore, the cat is in the teapot. So the first thing we want to do is we want to put the argument into standard form. So we flush out the conditional statement to put it into statement standard form. Say, so if the cat is in the teapot, then the gerbil is in the teapot. The gerbil is in the teapot, therefore the cat is in the teapot. Next, we want to abstract away from the content. So we can just look at the form. So we're going to do some abbreviations. So C will stand for the statement, the cat is in the teapot. And G will stand for the statement, the gerbil is in the teapot. So we can rewrite that as if C, then G. And then we, so the first, so if C, then G is a short way of writing if the cat is in the teapot, then the gerbil is in the teapot. Then we wrote, and the next line, the second premise was the gerbil is in the teapot. So we just write G. And then the conclusion was the cat is in the teapot. So we just write, therefore, C. And so now we've abstracted away from content and we can just look at the form. And then we can much more easily identify the form of the argument. It can be identified from the previous form. Once you get good at it, you can just look at, at it in standard form, probably, and recognize what what form it's an instance of. But this step of abstracting away from content is really helpful. So this is a form of argument called affirming the consequent. Because we're here we're affirming the consequent. And is this form valid or invalid? It's invalid. Because Consider, consider this argument. If it is raining, then the streets are wet. The streets are wet, therefore it's raining. You can't actually conclude that because there's a lot of other ways the streets could have gotten wet. Maybe somebody sprayed it with a hose. So this argument is invalid. And it's invalid no matter what the content is. It's invalid by virtue of its form. Here's another example. So, if there is a rabbit hole nearby, then that means there is company around. If there is company around, then there will be food available. Therefore, if there is a rabbit hole nearby, then there will be food available. So, let R stand for there is a rabbit hole nearby. C stand for there is company around. And F F excuse me, there will be food available. So we say, if there is a rabbit hole nearby, then there is company around. If there is company around, then there will be food available. Therefore, if there is a rabbit hole nearby, then there will be food available. This is of the form, this, this form is called a hypothetical syllogism. And this form is valid. We can see that if they all join together, it's sort of a transitive thing. So if R, then C. If C, then F. Therefore, if R, then F. We just kind of stitch them together and skip over the C part. We don't know that there will be food available, but we do know that if there is a rabbit hole nearby, then there will be food there. 